Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Kristen Booth about Marlene, which is going to be in theaters across Canada April 8th. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. It's exciting to chat. It's always exciting when you have a movie coming out. I feel like you can't really plan these days. I mean, maybe some people tell you, you know, the rough kind of release dates and everything, but has it hit you that this film is finally coming out soon? (laughs) Um, No. And, and, you know, this is a unique, unique uh, situation because this, we shot this in 2019 and, and obviously uh, the pandemic has really affected um, the timing. So it, it's nice to finally see the film um, being released for the public. Yeah, I know. It's it's pretty crazy. Now, you know, intense subject matter all across the board with this film. So I'm sure kind of when you sign on to this, you know that it is going to be an intense film, a very powerful story. Um are you can you even prepare yourself like when like when like you read the scripts a little bit but like can you even prepare yourself because this was an intense film i'm sure to work on Kristen. yeah you know it's interesting i i i've said in a couple other interviews this film um reading it on the page was a very different experience than when i actually was on set yeah uh, and in the moment and it was one of those projects where i consistently was discovering things um, in those moments of, you know, blocking the scene and then rehearsing and and then shoot. Like it was, it was always discovery. There was never, I never felt like I always knew, I knew what was going to happen ever. Like it was. (laughs) Is it safe to say the aspect of the powerful female lead is something that definitely drew you towards this project? Oh, certainly that, course and and um just the story itself uh it's such an infamous story in our country one that i don't feel has um certainly not been told in this medium um and so uh there's you know some wonderful books julian shear's book um especially was sort of my my bible going through this um absolutely yeah but to be able to tell this story, Stephen Truscott, sorry, excuse me, Stephen Truscott's story through the eyes of his wife, who really was his um, champion, uh, and the over forty-year sort of journey that she went on to get him exonerated, yeah. um, we've never heard this story. No, uh, and it's yeah, it's exciting that finally uh, it will be told. You got to work on this film with someone that we also interviewed as well, Greg Brick. What was it kind of like working on with him on this project? And what was it like kind of the discussions with him about, you know, bringing this story to the screen, like you said, about the exoneration mm-hmm. and everything? Mm-hmm. It was great. I mean, Greg actually is responsible for getting me the role. Oh, wow. Uh, so I have to thank him for that. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Greg. <laughs> he he in me to Wendy uh, when they were talking about um, who who might play Marlene, um, and you know certainly when Greg and I met and uh, for the first time and, and discussed the characters and the story, um, yeah. you know we we talked, uh, but honestly like we we discussed it briefly, mm-hmm. but ultimately the discovery is when we're on set and you know. Uh, in the moment um in those scenes and they are you know powerfully emotional scenes uh some of uh, which you know really snuck up on me um while shooting and i think uh i think that's just a, sort of the nature of this story too like yep. you know when you look at the script you're like well there's so many scenes with these boxes of of papers and documents and you know years of this history but it's all on sheets of paper um and so you think okay well that's boring um or uh sort of like unemotional uh and then you get into these scenes and all of a sudden those papers are evoking emotion that i i was i was 
personally quite surprised by. And there were moments where I would have to, you know, take a second and be like, holy crap, this is really hitting me in a way I wasn't, wasn't well, just, expecting. Just reading the log line and just kind of what the movie is about is just just like just even for the first time just seeing what it's about right not even watching a trailer or anything you you it hits hard like it does mm -hmm. which is well i think the the even though the film is about um steven's case mm -hmm. it really truly is it's a love story right yeah. it's a it's about a woman's commitment to her husband and to her family and to um the search for justice a hundred percent. No, absolutely. And it's going to be in theaters across Canada starting on the 8th. Um, Kristen Booth is a storyteller. That's what you do. What excites you about storytelling specifically? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think storytelling, when I think about what it, what it attracts me to it, it's, it's about the people within the story, not necessarily the the story itself. Yeah. So the individual characters, um, and as an actor, obviously in this one in particular, m my sole purpose was to um, bring Marlene off the page yeah. and to, because she is a, a real person in, in life, and uh, I, my goal was to do justice you know, for lack of a better word, um, to her and to, and for her and for her, her story. And I, I think, you know, you'll see in the film that for much of the 40 odd years that she, um, battled the, the, for Stevens, um, justice, uh, she, it, it mostly went unsung, you know, she, it was on a, not unappreciated by the family that was not the case, but, just it was in the darkness it was in the shadows it was behind closed doors that she did all of this mm -hmm. um and thanklessly really um and i think it really took a toll on her psychologically uh i know that she uh suffered from depression during it and and there were so many you know ups and downs throughout this entire thing where there were so many disappointments um and and uh, small injustices, yeah. sort of like on top of the massive one, right? And so her character, her conviction, her her, her strength, really, you know, that was the story for me. Um, well, that was what I wanted, the story I wanted to tell. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because, you know, like that's like a, pretty staple question that I asked the storytelling question in a lot of my interviews and you get a lot of different answers and everything but your answer and I feel like this project specifically Kristen is mm -hmm. one of the best things about storytelling in my opinion is that stories that weren't told before are finally getting told mm -hmm. and I feel mm -hmm. like this is this project is the perfect example of that you know what I mean it, yeah it really is yeah which is yeah and I think too I mean partly due to the changing in in our society and culture of saying hey you know there are so many female stories that have yet to be told mm -hmm. that should be told mm -hmm. and that now with you know the opportunities that women are having behind the camera uh, writing directing producing you know Wendy did all of those um and then, and then also this, our protagonist is this incredible woman who really changed the, changed the face of the justice system in our country. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think Marlene is, is heroic. Yeah. Um, and possesses a lot of qualities that are lacking today. Like that commitment that, you know, we live now and we're like, oh, well, we want like that fast sort of result. And, and, you know, it has to be now. And I mean, she spent over 40 years yeah. commit never gave up and so yeah i think it's a, it's time that we tell these stories about these strong incredible women a hundred percent no absolutely you, you said that perfectly um kind of a general question right now too i want to kind of pick your brain about a little bit too i mean we're seeing kind of comic book culture geek culture just kind of 
explode. Like when I was a kid growing up, you know, I would get like teased and made fun of for wearing like a Spider-Man shirt or anything. You know what I mean? Right. Now, if I wear it, I'm like the popular kid in school, right? Like comment and people are gonna be like, Hey, where did you get that shirt? You know what I mean? Um, you know, you're going to be in a new, the newest season of the boys coming out soon. What do you think about that? Do you find it's pretty weird that geek culture and comic book culture is like the biggest thing right now? Like it's, it's, it's a bit strange, isn't it? Yes and no. <laughs> I think we're desperate for heroes, mm. you know, um, both in fan in our fantasy worlds and now in our in our in our actual you know lives we we want that we want to see superhuman acts and superhuman people um because it's inspiring mm -hmm. because it gives us something to um look for, look to to say okay you know what like i want to feel i want to feel that power i want to feel that um strength that comes with this whole superhero sort of genre yeah. um, and i think we need heroes more than ever right and and uh and i think you know i what i would love to see and i think what this film does too is that it it illustrates that we don't necessarily have to look into the fantasy world and into the comic world For to the find heroes. those I've... these our heroes are all around us a hundred percent. Yeah. That's so true. I did the, the hero component of it. Cause it's just, it blows my mind every day about how big it is. Like, you know, like the Marvel DC movies by like a mile are like the biggest movies on the planet. Like it's not even a competition. You know what I mean? Sometimes. And it's just blows my mind how we yeah. got there. You look at this film, you look at a lot of films, a lot of projects, Tristan. Um, a lot of projects kind of know what they are and kind of know what the identity is. We know what Marlene is. Marlene is a very powerful, important story. Then, and, you know, you put it in the the genre of, you know, drama and importance and all of that and um, inspirational. You look at other projects that are a little, like more genre bending where it's not really clear cut like what this project is. You know what I mean? Um, is it... You know, action, is it a comedy? Is it, you know, a drama? What do you kind of think about that? Because they're two different kind of projects and we're seeing them a lot now. And I feel like it's 50-50 down the middle. Projects that kind of know what they are genre-wise and then projects that are genre-bending. What do you think about that landscape right now, Kristen? I, I mean, it excites me. I love I love what's happening with the mixing of the genres and, and um, you know, The Boys is one of those <laughs> that's a perfect example of it and and i think it's um a lot of the reason why it's so popular and why that show is doing so well because it is one of those shows that you you're kind of like wait what am i watching here <laughs> yes for superheroes and now i'm like i'm getting sort of like you know political satire and comedy and what yeah like i'm laughing at like all this stuff happening, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I actually, it quite excites me both as a viewer, as as someone looking for entertainment, and someone uh, who's in the industry and and create and a creator as well. Hundred percent. I'm so excited for the new season of The Boys. Like, just I want it right now, but I gotta wait a little longer. But I'm so excited. But um, <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> Hold on, it is insane. I, yeah, I wouldn't expect anything less because that show just season after season, it just blows my yeah. mind. Um, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turd of Chatterboard Marlene. This was awesome. Oh, thank you for having me. And, and thank you for your, you know, really great uh, uh, questions. Oh, I thank really you. appreciate it. So, so Marlene is going to be available across Canada in theaters on the 8th. So if they, there, there's going to be a bunch of, um, showings and cities that it's available in when they watch this youtube channel they can see wherever it's playing so they should really check it out um if they have a chance and where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything uh i'm on instagram and twitter at uh at kristen t booth mm -hmm. and it's kristen k-r-i-s-t-i-n Absolutely. Well, this has been Pop Turn at youtube.com slash pop turn for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Kristen Booth, who you can catch in Marlene in theaters across Canada, April 8th, and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. 
Be sure to like Poptternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.